obstruction and uh, willful retention of important documents. Fair enough. But is it really serious enough to send a former American president to prison? Because it's quite common for former presidents to have uh, sensitive documents wherever they live post-presidential life. That's a fair point. Um, it is. And in fact, um, recently, um, former Vice President Pence and uh, current President Biden um, had to answer questions about their own retention of uh, documents uh, that should not have left, uh, that, that were classified or secret. The difference is that when they realized that they possessed these documents and that they were out of secure facilities, um, they immediately returned them. And um, the difference here is that Donald Trump, after being uh, contacted by the National Archives, um, didn't return all of the documents. The National Archives uh, became aware uh, that some documents remained missing. Uh, they referred their concerns to the Department of Justice, the FBI, investigated search warrant was issued after a subpoena by the grand jury was not um, fully complied with. And that search warrant yielded still more classified documents that had not been turned over. Right. And as alleged in the indictment, uh, Mr. Trump uh, enlisted the assistance of his staff and even his lawyer to conceal those documents. It does come in a highly charged political environment. It is at the beginning or, or even midway through an election run at the moment because Trump announced his candidacy so long ago now. So how on earth does he get a fair trial here? Well, um, the, the question of whether he receives a fair trial, um, it, I'm not sure um, that there, there's much concern that he's going to get a fair trial. Um, I think, in fact, um, if you look at the statements that he's making, um, the statements he's making about this being a witch hunt, about this being um, politically motivated, um, in fact, may influence the jury in his favor. Um, I, I believe that those, those statements are being directed not just to his supporters uh, for political purposes, but to influence the jury pool. So right. um, I don't think there's any question that, that he's going to receive a fair trial. And in fact, he may be influencing some voters in his favor, some well, jury... What? potential jury members in his favor. Okay, so if it goes the other way and he, and he ends up being convicted, what, what, what are the chances of him actually being behind bars here? I don't really think it's, it's appropriate to speculate about a conviction. Um, I, I do want to emphasize that the indictment, while it is powerful and compelling in terms of the, the way that it lays out the allegations, uh, is not evidence. Um, those are uh, those allegations are the evidence that the government believes it's going to be able to put forward. Um, and until we know what evidence is going to be available uh, right. to the government to put forward, it'd be impossible for us to speculate. I mean, whatever happens here, there's going to be appeal upon appeal upon appeal. Uh, how long do you think this whole process could take and, and, and the likelihood of it happening before the election? I think part of the defence uh, strategy is going to be to delay. Um, and obviously, uh, Mr. Trump is not the sort of person who capitulates or admits fault. So there is a very, very small chance, if any, that he would admit to anything, plead guilty to anything here. So uh, it, the expectation is that he's going to fight um, every iota of this and is going to file motions and appeal them, if possible, and extend this um, beyond the election if he can. Okay, Alejandro Soto, that's the uh, former US federal prosecutor. Appreciate your time. Thanks for talking to us this morning on a big day. We'll talk to you soon.